Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be doing PPQ number four. We're going to be analyzing the carriers of malware based attack. So let me know if you have any questions. Leave a chat or leave a comment. I'd be happy to help. All right, so let's take a look at this scenario here. Uh, this is indicators of a malware based attack. And we have, so the scenario, just like we're going into this blind, a security, as a security analyst, you must investigate intrusions into your organization's large network and understand why they happened. Recently, a malicious actor infected two hosts, and you need to reconstruct the attack and its methods so that the network and users can have protection against future malicious activity. To that end, you will need to think like the malicious actor and rebuild the base uh Rebuild the attacks based on defenses and vulnerabilities present in the exploited systems. All right, interesting. Okay, so I don't think that scenario really said anything. Two hosts, we gotta reconstruct the attack. Uh, we have to think like a malicious actor, rebuild the attacks based on the defenses and vulnerabilities present in the vulner in the system. Okay, didn't really tell us too much. Uh, based on the scenario, use the drop down selector to select the malware type that best fits the malicious actor's goal, attack vector, delivery method, and payload to defeat or exploit the victim's defenses or vulnerabilities. All right, it's a mouthful. Okay, scenario one victim's defenses. Okay, network administration and access based on least privilege use of multi factor authentication. Those are the defenses, the vulnerabilities. Microsoft Office 365 security misconfigurations, Adobe products lacking latest security patches. Okay, Adobe, that's probably key. Malicious actor's goal, intellectual property theft by exploiting increased remote work and work from home initiatives. All right. Okay, uh, malicious actor, we got, looks like the internet and an email. And then a skull and crossbow. Okay. So, you know, this is one where you can write off the graphic right away, but I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I think this graphic is actually important. Most of the time, you know, this is seen by students as just like flavor to the question, but I think there's a key piece of information here, and I think it's that email. So I think that tells us something. Because does it say that they used emails? No, they didn't. I think that's probably going to have something to do with this, but let's take a look. Malware type. Uh, now let me scroll down here. There, okay. Malware type, fileless, logic bomb, pup, trojan, virus, virus or worm. Okay. Attack vector, malicious jar. MS Office PDF for XML. Okay. Delivery method, application vulnerability, network vulnerability, phishing or hoax email, spear phishing email, social engineering. Okay. Payload. Bot, crypto ransomware, crypto jacking, crypto miner, keylogger, rat, rootkit, spyware. All right. So let's look at some keywords here. Uh, the defenses are network administration access based on least privilege, use of multi-factor authentication. I don't know if that really has any relevance to what we're doing here. Vulnerabilities, Office 365, security misconfigurations, and Adobe products lacking latest security patches. Now, Office 365 could mean, you know, some sort of macro virus, but Adobe products, that usually hints at PDF. It's usually what it goes towards on the test. I know Adobe makes a lot of different products, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, but usually when it says Adobe, they want you to think PDF. So let's go down to our attack vector. We have both Office and PDF as option. I think I'm gonna lean towards PDF just because they say Adobe here. I can see why people, it might be Office though. So I'm gonna pick PDF just because they say Adobe. This one stands out to me. Why say Adobe unless it has to mean something? It's like Chekhov's gun. You know, Chekhov used the gun to shoot the writer, and that's why you have modern theater, right? I think that's how the saying goes. Anyway, malware type. Let's take a look. Fileless logic bomb, pup. That's a potentially unwanted program or a vir Trojan virus or worm. Well, potentially unwanted program that doesn't really have, it's not malicious. 
Uh, so this is going to have to be some sort of, if it's attached to a PDF, it'd probably be a Trojan. I'm going to go with Trojan. Does it say anything that would indicate a Trojan? Okay, now this is where I think the delivery method makes sense with the email. Because it doesn't say what we're talking about. It's a great question, uh, Luke. Why would they mention Office 365? I don't know. Now that one makes me think it's either one of these two. Why would they mention Office 365? I mean, Office 365 is a common deployment for work from home, but I don't know if that's, that uh, means anything. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. That's why I'm torn between these two. I do think the delivery method would be a type of phishing. It's either phishing or spear phishing. I don't see anything here that tells us it's spear phishing. And if it's just remote work or work from home, then, you know, it could be. Now here, that you could think into this one and say, okay, is the actor targeting a specific company? But it doesn't say that. It just says the actor's goal is to exploit remote work or work from home. It doesn't say it's targeting a specific company there. So I think this is just going to be regular phishing. Regular phishing. Yeah, you could say the same for Adobe. You know, that why is Adobe here? Why is Microsoft Office 365? Now, the reason I want to lean towards PDF is because Adobe is very specific and Adobe always, almost always means PDF, okay? So if Adobe wasn't here, I'd be picking MS Office file. But even when there's both of them, just because they put Adobe, Adobe is only going to be PDF. Office 365 can have a lot of different types of vulnerabilities, not just macro viruses. So I think that's why, that's my thought process behind picking PDF more than Office 365, if that helps. Because it is confusing. I agree. All right, now the payload, that's going to be a Trojan. Uh, okay, what, what's okay? What's the intended? What would the intended? All right, intellectual property theft. So, what would accomplish intellectual property theft? That's the actor's goal. Uh, a bot is not. That's just going to be used for denial of service. Crypto ransomware. I mean, not unless they exploit them for, or they do a double extortion. Double um, extortion. Crypto jacking. Crypto miner. That just makes the Actor money, key log, key logger, that's the intellectual property theft. A remote access Trojan could be used to exfiltrate data. A rootkit could also be used. And spyware, I mean, spyware could also be used to, to look at, you know, what's going on on the, uh, the machine there. Hmm. So I, it's got to be, it's not going to be these. Not gonna be those. It's either keylogger, spyware. Now I think it's either keylogger or spyware. These, while they can be used for that, they're not specifically used for that. They're not specifically used for intellectual property theft. So this is the key term here. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, which I'm gonna go with spyware for now. Let's come back to that one. That's tricky. They're not really getting a lot of guidance here. All right, scenario two, victims offenses, VPNs updated with the latest patches, extensive network security monitoring capabilities. Okay, that's a pretty solid defense. Victim vulnerabilities, Microsoft products lacking latest security patches. Okay, MS Office docs with embedded content allowed. Okay, now that speaks to a macro virus. That's gotta be a macro virus, MS Office uh, vulnerability. Malicious actors go loss of availability and financial gain by encrypting data. Okay, that's just another term for ransomware. This one seems a little more straightforward. Let's go ahead and pick the payload first because I think that's gonna be ransomware. Are these the same? Pretty much. Okay, crypto ransomware, same ransomware, crypto ransomware, it's the same thing. Uh, Is it possible mentioning Office 365 security misconfiguration would point towards enabling a missless PDF to be downloaded? Now that's it's a good line of thought, but I think that's that's making some assumptions that aren't present in the question, and we're kind of thinking a little too deep into that. But that's that's a good line of thinking. We just want to we just want to present you know think about the question just with what they give us here. Oh Dante, you passed your exam. Hey, congratulations! That's great. 
I'm glad these helped. I'm glad uh, I was able to help you in some way. Great job. All right, let's see. Uh, delivery method here. Okay, let's go ahead and pick attack vector because I think this is going to be MS Office file. So this one is MS Office file. Not to say that they both can't be MS Office file, but this one definitely is. MS Office docs with embedded content allowed. That's going to be some sort of um, malicious office file or macro virus. And then the malware type. Let me get my face out of here. Malware type. Phyllis, Logic Bomb, Pup, Trojan, Virus, or Worm. Now, if it's a malicious office file, it could be a Phyllis virus. If it's network security monitoring capabilities and latest patches, I kind of think Phyllis virus makes sense because that those types of viruses can avoid detection. So I think I want to lean towards Phyllis virus. I think that makes the most sense. Okay, and then delivery method. I think this is going to be email again. I mean, we have the email. I think this actually means something. I know this doesn't really look like anything, but I think this makes the most sense. Uh, now, would it be a, just a regular phishing? It doesn't really say anything about... It's not going to be a network vulnerability. We have extensive network monitoring. VPNs with latest patches, not going to be of application vulnerabilities for spear phishing, phishing or hoax, and social engineering. I don't think it would be a regular phishing email because we have extensive security monitoring, so it might be either spear phishing or social engineering. I'm going to say a spear phishing email. It doesn't really say anything about, you know, it's targeting a specific company, but a spear phishing email would have more success than a regular phishing email. And this is a pretty hardened network. That's why I'm thinking that. Okay, this is a tricky one. All right, let's see. The scenario one, I want to revisit this. Beliefs, privilege, multi-factor authentication. Adobe products, that's PDF, probably. Uh, intellectual property thefts can be... Exploiting remote from, hmm. Intellectual property theft could also be a key logger. Now I'm wavering between these two. Uh, that's a good point. I'm gonna go with key logger on this one. I, I think that's gonna speak a little more towards intellectual property theft. Nor call you say application vulnerability considering the latest patches are not. So that's a good point. Let's see. Microsoft Process lacking the latest security patch. That's a good point. That's a good point. That might be an application vulnerability. It does have the email though. I don't know. This I mean this might not mean anything. Uh huh. This is the delivery method. Okay. And I'm not I'm not a big fan of how they make these terms. That, that might be right. That might be right. Yeah, this is tricky. You might be right on that one, I gotta say. I'm gonna stick with this graphic though. Now there's nothing that says it's spear phishing. But I think this, it's going to be a little more damaging than a phishing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try this one out. Let's see how it goes here. I don't know if I'm going to get all these. Normally I get all of them, but let's see. Okay, not bad. Let's see what's going on here. Seven to eight, I missed this one. And it's not even one I was thinking about. Okay, so this one, let's see the explanation here. When reconstructing the attacks, one first was, must first analyze the victim's network and systems to find attack vectors, delivery methods, and probable payloads. The attack vector is how the attacker gained access to the victim's machine. The delivery method is the route the attacker used to place malicious code in the victim's machine. And the payload is the actual malware involved. Okay, right, that doesn't tell us anything. <laughs> the intellectual property theft by exploiting increased remote work and remote from, yeah, okay, that's scenario one. 
Media outlets have run reports of state-sponsored other malicious actors exploiting current worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. The rapid rush by many organizations to institute remote work and work from home initiatives has resulted in possible misconfigurations at cloud services and other areas. Moreover, the cybersecurity infrastructure agency CIS has announced that malicious actors using COVID-19 pandemic to ex- execute convincing social engineering, phishing, and hoax email campaigns, among other actions. Okay. This means that whether misconfiguration exists or not, it may be possible to convince victims to take actions that result in damaging malware infections. It doesn't really, I mean, yeah, that, that's true, but it could be other things too. The victim has some rebo- has rebo- robust access and authentication protections in place. The hacker's goal is IP theft, intellectual property theft. Two avenues that the hacker can take include exploiting misconfigurations at cloud services or levering convincing campaign to prompt the user to execute a file or action that exploits Adobe product vulnerabilities. Okay. In either case, a Trojan with embedded keylogger software could accomplish the attacker's goal. But spyware could still do that. The attacker can bypass authentication mechanisms. Victim has cloud service misconfigurations unpacked Adobe products, the best attack vector and delivery system based on the drop-down choices of use of convincing phishing or hoax email. It doesn't really explain why. It just says what the answer is. All right. The scenario indicates the victim has some degree of network protections in place and the malware types available use of a Trojan with embedded crypto ransomware could accomplish the attacker's goal if the attackers can bypass network defenses. Okay. I guess. I mean, I would think that here it'd be some sort of, you know, even if it's a Trojan, we're being more specific with fileless virus. I'm not liking the explanations on these, I gotta say. Victim relies heavily on Microsoft Office products, which according to cybersecurity with CISA, remain one of the top two targeted software product lines by malicious actors. Unpack systems, embedded documents, list as vulnerabilities. The best attack vector and delivery system would be used as spear phishing email with malicious MS Office file. Now, why would it be a spear phishing email? Just because they have unpatched systems, embedded documents listing as vulnerabilities. I mean, I understand that for the malicious MS Office file, but why would it be spear phishing? Since so this victim system permits embedded content execution, OLE, so enable the execution of embedded crypto ransomware in the most effective manner or efficient manner possible. Okay. Yeah. I think what this is, what they're doing here is they're basically, they're taking some past examples of attacks did some research, looked at some critical infrastructure attacks, operational technology attacks, you know, industrial security types of attacks, and they use those as case studies, and then they tried to jam those into a question. Okay, so they took these and they pushed them into a question, and the question writer came up with, you know, what they thought was a very clever solution, but if you don't know the background, it's a little confusing. I'm not a big fan of this question. I'd give it like a six out of ten, not five out of ten. Give this a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10 question on the Cybercraft scale. It's the new scale. New new rating system. I just came up with it. Uh, yeah. Hope this was helpful. Um, I'm not just salty because I missed a question either. <laughs> okay. I hope this was helpful. If you do guys have any questions or you know wonder why any of the questions are like this, let me know. Happy to tell. Leave a comment. Leave a or email info at I'll be happy to answer your stuff. Uh, if you guys are looking for Security Plus training, check the link in the description. I got my self-paced course, instructor-led boot camps every month. You got evening, weekend options, day options, whatever you need. First time pass guarantee comes with all boot camps. And you know we're, we're here for you, job placement, whole nine yards to help you every step of the way. But I hope this is helpful, guys. I appreciate level of participation. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for asking your questions.